Hello you, welcome to Geekism and welcome back to Pinewood Hills, our British real estate as best as we can make it at least park here in Planet Coaster. So uh, I know I've mentioned it a few times in previous episodes, I have been racking my brains at something to fill in this last bit of the Googie area for quite some time now, it's a long thin strip, I was just, I'll be honest with you, I was just going to be lazy and stick some trees there, maybe make a little bit of a picnic area or something like that, um, but having seen Ruble's fantastic work, I'm still reeling over it to be honest with you and sort of seeing how sort of packed in a lot of the stuff is and uh, and him himself talking a little bit about how commando sort of pushes him to kind of fill gaps a bit more uh you know with care a bit more care than just sort of filling it with trees and that's made something to go back so i i went actually went back and had a look over all the comments in the previous video to see if anyone had had any great ideas and quite a few people i didn't quite realize how many people had actually mentioned it but quite a few people mentioned having a bowling alley here in the 60s area and um it, for some reason it just kind of passed me by but it's actually a fantastic suggestion because it kind of ticks a lot of boxes it's a right it's the right sort of era you know 60s was very big for bowling um um, Googie architecture fits a bowling alley almost perfectly and um, also the idea of it being in this sort of budget park fits really well as well it would have acted as a great uh, upsell uh, what we call this so that it wouldn't uh, it wouldn't be included in the price of the uh, admission for the park if you wanted to play bowling you would have to come and pay for it and uh, smaller parks have a lot of that sort of stuff you find a lot of sort of flat rides or these inflatables uh, and then obviously you know a lot of midway and things like that so uh, yeah really great uh, fits in every box the only box it doesn't tick is that it's an interior and after just speaking to Ruble about it and saying how much I despise doing interiors and how I think they're a complete waste of time this video is pretty much entirely an interior I didn't quite get as much time in Planet Coaster as I wanted this week I really wanted to cap this building off uh, but unfortunately I didn't quite get the exterior done. We do make some work to it, uh, but that's going to have to wait until next week now. Uh, next week, I'm hoping, I, no promises, but I'm hoping we can pretty much finish this area in next week. So it's going to be uh, the final exterior here uh, and then a fair bit of snagging, which we're going to be doing spread over the live streams and then also next week's episode as well. Uh, one thing I still need to do here is I'm using a billboard. Uh, there was no wooden pieces that I could really get that nice smooth wood texture uh, with here that you need for the... Um, uh, for the actual alley itself so I've used billboards and I'm gonna find a nice uh, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to find the bowling alley texture to be honest with you a lot of this video has been looking for parts uh, especially actually I think I, I think it actually got cut out because I hadn't pressed record when I came back into the game but one thing that took me a good while was finding something to use as the pins as in the actual sort of uh, pins from the name Tempin Bowling. Uh, I went. I headed over to the Bro Nation uh, Discord server, which if you're not a member of, you really should be. If you're interested in this kind of realistic build style uh, in Planet Coaster, the Bro Nation Discord server is a fantastic resource. Um, I shouldn't really tell people about it, to be honest with you, because everyone on there is a million times better than I am at this game, and uh, you'll all go over there and realise that actually I'm not that good <laughs> and stop watching. So uh, part of me thinks you shouldn't go over there, but no, in all seriousness, there there is some fantastic stuff over there. It is fast becoming one of the best resources for this sort of um, uh, budget conscious, realistic style building, which I personally, I think it's where the game is going to find its uh, sort of uh, long term lifespan. I really do. I think people uh, who are making crazy stuff and, uh, and, and just enjoying the game have incredibly, you know, enjoyed the game. Uh, but a lot of them have, are moving on to something else. Now, the game's been out for nearly two years, you know, and even now I notice that when I play other games on the channel, people are like, oh, Planet Coaster's dying. And it's not dying. It's still twice a week on the video with a live stream on Tuesdays and a, and a video on Fridays. It has been for almost a year now and will be continuing at least another year while we finish Pinewood when Pinewood if Pinewood ever gets finished who knows what's next but um, I'm still having an absolute blast in this park but I think the reason I'm still having a blast and still really finding a lot of fun in it is because I'm setting myself these challenges uh, and trying to solve them here's me here's me looking for look here's me looking for pins look oh look they've appeared <laughs> that's where I forgot to press record uh, so those pins actually are the very top of of one of the minaret pieces from the castle set so it's, there's, there's actually a huge castle building underneath this uh, this bowling alley that you would never know these ruins of castles <laughs> uh, because the top of them 
I almost look perfect as a as a bowling pin. We tried a few things. There was one of the adventure pieces that looked pretty good. I have to have a, give a huge shout out to Mineral, uh, a fantastic builder in the game. You'll have seen his stuff on Brona on there, Bro Coaster, um, and also like I say, if you remember the Discord, he's got some really good stuff over there as well. So um, yeah, big thanks to Mineral for going through all the parts. Or maybe he just knew. Maybe he's just got an encyclopedic knowledge of stuff you can do in uh, in the game. Uh, also, a big shout out to uh, to Joshua. Oh, I'm forgetting your surname. I think it's Amos. I think his name's Joshua Amos, uh, who told me to. Uh, you're using the art pieces here to make bowling balls. Uh, told me that if you use the smallest uh, screen mount, you can actually sink it right in so that you can just see the tips of it and it makes it look like there's holes so you can add the three holes in the bowling balls which is really good um i actually went to such amount of care with this that i actually went on and found the colors of bowling balls in the uk i don't know about in the states but in the uk very rarely have black bowling balls unless it's your own ball um bowling balls in the uk are colored depending on the size of them uh, and they're all sort of really muted blues and greens and browns and and, and oranges and weird quite awful colors really but they actually fit googie quite well because a lot of googie's colors are very sort of muted um, neutral colors so uh, browns oranges lots of like almost like earthy colors so actually works out quite nicely you'll see i go in here and, and sort of pick stuff and um, i can't use the hex codes because the hex codes are a bit funky with art shapes so i go in and find roughly the same sort of colors uh, we go back and add those spots later on uh, here i randomly fall on this piece which i think is meant to be like a coaster piece or something but i think it looks just like bumpers so we get some bumpers up uh, on the middle aisle there and uh, I think I just add them across and lower them down so they look like they're packed away on the others. Um, I've gone into far too much detail here but saying that there still isn't that much detail here there isn't as much detail as maybe something like Uthrish used to do or uh, SP Ridley I know he's one for doing um, very detailed interiors and also a lot of the guys like I say on the Bro Nation doing really incredibly detailed interiors but um, I'll be honest with you Pinewood is beginning to slow now i'm still getting around 30 frames uh, for the most part and i'm still on pretty good settings as well so i can drop the settings way down to sort of medium um and and get maybe sort of 40 frames but we're getting to the beginning of it slowing down so part count is going to be something that i'm considering from now on um which i haven't done in the past but yeah i'm going to be just just keeping an eye on it all right now um what that means is i'm not i'm not going to really worry too much about uh, buildings outside and scenery outside uh, but here where i have done an interior i'm not going to go quite as crazy as i could with the uh, with the parts you know so uh, so here i'm trying to keep the part count relatively low on this but still get quite a nice design the good thing is i'm going to say it again with googie uh hashtag googie is that um it's all very sort of stylized stuff and very simple shapes uh, lots of squares lots of um simple curves and stuff like that so uh, actually even though i'm trying to keep the part count down here this kind of uh you know plasticky um solid nature actually kind of fits the theme pretty well it's maybe a little late for Googie. Um, maybe this place might have been refurbed in the 70s. Uh, you know, it's got a little bit of a, of a later feel to it, but I've definitely kind of gone a little bit for that sort of American diner approach here. Um, and also just bowling alleys. I researched a, a lot of reference images of bowling alleys uh, from the 60s, and, and this, especially this uh, this booth I'm making here, is pretty much a rip from, uh, from one of those as best as I can make it. Um, it ends up being a bit big. So later on, uh, you'll see here, if we put them in just as is, uh, there's nowhere to move and they can't. And for some reason, one piece has duplicated itself loads of times and made itself green. I don't really understand what happened there. Um, so what we have to do now is go back into these and uh, carry them back. I don't know what they're called. The, the ball return things. So sort of carry them back a little bit uh, and then take the... Uh, I think I end up making that piece a little bit simpler because I realised there was like 12 pieces there just to make that one bit of metal and from, quite frankly it's just not needed. Uh, then move the booths back and over on each side there and then I think we take a couple of the seats away on the end ones and make them just sort of corner uh, spaces just to kind of keep that area open. A couple of things I still, this interior isn't quite finished, it's near enough done, but a couple of things I still need to do. Uh, one is to add some sort of uh, score machine at the front they usually have these little um well I, I, 
they're probably touchscreens now. I remember them being really sort of clunky button things, actually, where you had to really jam the buttons down because they're all sticky, covered in Coke and, uh, you know, hot dog grease and things like that. So um, they've probably gone all touchscreen now, but I want them to be a little bit janky in this park. So I'm going to do those sort of janky buttons. And then also, obviously, the screens above that give the scores. Uh, that's something we're going to have to go back to as well. The other thing I want to have a little look at again is, uh, is this wall that I'm doing here. It's a little... Um, it's a little simplistic, it doesn't really fit the theme at all. I've just kind of um, covered it up because I knew that I needed an interior wall because uh, I didn't want that sort of concrete and uh, flagstone to, to show through. Um, so yeah, suggestions on a postcode really. I mean, I can, I could just use billboards and, you know, find a, a 60s wall pattern. Um, that's, you know, very doable. But, you know, if there's something in the game I could do, I was thinking sort of very large geometric shapes, but again, that's virgin a little bit more on sort of late 70s early 80s um sort of like the opening credits alive and kicking that kind of thing um but yeah so i think i need to have another little go at the wall pieces here i've kind of done them just to kind of finish them off and get be able to get a couple of half decent screenshots but I, i'm very aware I, I, while i was doing them that they don't really quite look right uh, the actual alley itself i think has turned out really quite nice um, I think that the booth looks really good, uh, where, where the uh, the pins are looks really good, it's all grey uh, here, you'll see in a moment when we do the sort of glamour shots at the end, you'll see that it's, I've sort of coloured it in, um, and again, sort of kept lots of geometric shapes and uh, those sort of muted neutrals uh, that you find with the style. Uh, of architecture that we're doing really enjoyed building in this style um it's it, it's given me its challenges uh but it's also kind of helped my creativity i think to think to have to think a little bit out of the box and not just use one of the th themes that are built with the game it's the first time i've really had to do that because even in the first area of pinewood it's been relatively generic builds which kind of just been walls and rooms really you know it's been very sort of cheap very sort of early build styles uh, whereas here you know they've got a bit more of a budget it, the, the park's been open for 20 years by the time this is built and um it's probably doing quite well uh, the, you know the war's all well over now and, and there's no sort of worries uh, there financially and they've got the money to do a big uh, a, a big expansion but at the time of the expansion there wasn't really a super ride that they could add in you know coasters steel coasters weren't a thing they, also, they already had two wooden coasters so instead what they've had to do is kind of try and bring people in on the basis of the uh, the architecture the awesome buildings and uh, you know sort of really try and theme up the flats a little bit so with the dodgems and the big wheel and things like that it all kind of lends itself to this style of building so i have really enjoyed building in this style um i'm looking forward to moving on to something else though uh, there's something else i'm not 100% sure where we're going to go now. We, I, I definitely want to do a 70s area uh, and basically what I want to do is build a real jank early steel coaster. So think uh, the corkscrew at Alton Towers, uh, that kind of thing. Really sort of uh, very uh, sort of uh, prefab pieces. They rattle your head around um, but it would be the first coaster in the country with a vertical loop or with a corkscrew piece or, or, or something like that, a first inversion or something. It's going to be a bit of a big deal for the park, it's going to have a really tacky name, it's going to be called something like the loop de loop or, or you know a lot of the early rides like that just named themselves after whatever they did so uh, that's going to be something i'm very conscious about you know corkscrew was called corkscrew because it corkscrewed and things like that so i really want to make sure that um it's really jank like that theming wise it won't really have any It'd be very generic 70s building but i don't really want to do too much else with the building it's not going to be a massive expansion the idea is that all of their money in the 70s the decades of the decades worth of money that they earned went on this steel coaster basically Basically, that, that, that's kind of going to be the the, uh, the theme behind it. It's going to be a huge, almost like a make or break um, uh, development for them. Uh, after that, we're getting into 80s then, 80s, 90s. You can kind of do what you like then, really. Apart from, obviously, a few coasters designs not existing. Probably a few other flats not existing until later on as well. Once you get to the 80s, uh, you know, themed rides were a thing. Haunted houses were a thing. Um, so we're probably going to look at doing a couple of themed areas. They're not going to be mega, mega themes uh, like we used to do in Geektopia. They're going to be... Um, still budget conscious, but I'm definitely thinking we do a couple of theme themes. I'm considering maybe um, like a, a British uh, medieval almost, like a Camelot kind of feel. 
the reason I, I want to do that sometimes is because um, you know most American parks will have a um, especially the smaller ones uh, but actually Disney does to be fair will have like a frontier area uh, sort of harking back to their history um, British parks don't seem to do that much British parks will pretty much always go pirate um, because it's a nice cheap easy thing to build it's lots of rope and it's lots of uh, wood um, but I'm thinking instead right because you know even though budget isn't is a conscious decision here um, I want to really push the British aspects of it so I'm thinking rather than doing um, a pirate area I'm thinking a medieval area would work quite out quite well but try and keep it relatively uh, real not realistic uh, but you know uh, still theme parky but more realistic than say just doing a uh, uh, you know fantasy area because obviously there's fantasy pieces in the build, but we're not going to have uh, dragons necessarily uh, But we might go and look at things like Arthurian legends, you know uh, Sword in the stone that kind of thing. So I'm kind of thinking an area for that um, And then probably just a bit of a mismatch area that has things like a haunted house uh, a few more flats um, and then um, I, I think I would like an adventure area as well. It's be sort of generic adventure area that has something like a, a boat ride or a log flume in it, and, a, and maybe a, a mine coaster or something like that. Because I, I really haven't delved properly into the adventure. Uh, DLC and I would like to because it's a really fun uh, DLC pack. So uh, that's kind of my plan. Um, this may all change very soon because some eagle-eyed people have spotted that the Steam DB uh, pages for Planet Coaster have been updated with a, uh, a download on the way. We know nothing about it. We don't know whether it's DLC. We don't know whether it's uh, a paid thing or just maybe it might just be a couple of bug fixes. It might well just be they're updating some workshop files. It could be nothing. But, um, you know, it's been a few months now it's been around the, around the right sort of time that we hear something else um, you know obviously they're working hard with Jurassic World Evolution uh, Elite Dangerous just had a big update as well but they do have separate teams for each of these games so there are people who go to work every day at Frontier and work on Planet Coaster so just because those games uh, are having a lot of development at the moment it doesn't mean that Planet Coaster isn't so I wouldn't be surprised if we hear something within the next couple of weeks uh, about a new um, piece of content for the game, whether it's just a point uh, point number update, you know, a 1.5, or actually Adventures class is 1.5, so maybe a 1.6 free update, or it's uh, a new DLC, maybe, uh, I don't know, something like um, uh, Oriental would be quite good, like sort of Japanese buildings I think would be quite interesting. Um, uh, we, could, we can only hope maybe something like a, a generic <laughs> DLC would be awesome, I, I can't see them ever doing it, but, uh, you know, a DLC full of different types of uh, rubbish cart <laughs> that'd be great <laughs> uh, but yeah I, I, and whatever it is i'm looking forward to it at the end of the day uh, the system that planet coaster has in place means that even if the theme is not something you use uh, as the theme itself there's still so many parts in it hell how many times have we used the spooky planks in this park and there isn't a singi single single uh, piece of uh, spooky you know area at all how many times have we used some of the uh, temple pieces from the uh, adventure set as you know concrete posts that's the best thing about this game. It's a big box of Lego, so you know when you buy a big box of Lego, you'll you'll build whatever there is on the box cover once, but then after that, you'll start using the bits and bobs in other builds you're doing, and that's that's my favourite thing about Planet Coaster is it really does give you a lot of scope for doing things like that. Uh, so I'm starting work on the exterior here. The exterior is actually based on a building uh, by another creator by uh, the name of Chris Sawyer. Uh, it's not that Chris Sawyer, as in the guy behind Roller Coaster Tycoon 1 and 2, uh, but it is that Chris Sawyer, the guy who works with Frontier and events, often dressing up as Chief Beef. Uh, he's also one of the admins on the theme park simulation games, or, or theme park and zoo simulation games, or it might just be theme park and simulation games now. I forget the name, they change it often. Uh, but the big Facebook group, basically, that uh, has a lot of Planet Coaster content on it, uh, he did, uh, he's been doing a really great series of Rudy Renkamel, on um, on sort of speculation and thoughts of Jurassic World Evo when it comes out, and in the recent video they were um, talking about uh, the, the the engine, uh, the game engine, the uh, Cobra engine, and uh, and its sort of positives and limitations. And in the background they have footage of a Planet Coaster Park uh, that Chris has made in the style of, of Jurassic Park. It's 
really fantastic. He's got he's got a, like a statue of the DNA guy. Uh, it's got some of the buildings. I don't know where he's got the references from. I'm not a mega Jurassic Park fan really, other than you know I've seen the movies and they're pretty good. Um, but yeah, they're really really great. And this bit I'm doing here is very much based on a building he had in his park that was called uh, DNA. I think I don't know if it was a restaurant or a bar or whatever. Uh, but it had this sort of um, spiked roof that came out, and then these huge. Um, I guess would probably be steel structures that sort of held it up and then those structures actually carry on through the top of it as well uh, but that is all I got done before uh, before we finished. Last thing I did, this was actually filmed a little bit later, um, I was looking back over Ruble's stuff and, and one of the reasons why the, this area and Ruble's area don't quite gel yet, uh, which we're going to work on is Ruble's used some really great uses of, uh, of foliage and one of the things we haven't done here is use foliage at all and it, zooming out it actually looks like quite a big grey mess so we're going to try and get a little bit more foliage into here mostly in between each building but also we have this quite large concrete area here um, that's a little bit oversized really it's got people wandering through it and it's quite a big open area and there's not much to do with it so I thought uh, this would be perfect for a couple of um, sort of planters here with a tree in and we've used the beech trees that uh, Rubles used over there to try and sort of tie uh, begin the process anyway of tying that areas together there and then um, we just swap one tree out for the other because there's two different types of it and I think it's turned out really quite nice. Uh, it's a little thing but it just sort of fills that area, brings a bit of colour to it and, uh, and breaks up that really large mass of concrete. I'm going to finish off with a couple of glamour shots as we always do. You'll see I've got the alleyway picture in there, the, uh, the, the Tempin Alley. I think that looks really good. Uh, so in the next episode we'll finish off the exterior of this building on a really big bowler armour sign on the top of it. So I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, the building itself is a little big, um, but uh, I'm going to go with it. What can you do? Uh, thanks very much for watching. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Uh, if you have, you can give us a like. It really does help out the channel. And if you're not already, don't forget to subscribe. Any thoughts, queries or suggestions, you can pop those down in the comments. Comments. And if you uh, fancy chat, you can find me on Twitter. I'm at John T. Sparrow. If you'd like to join in with the Geekism community, you can do so over on our Geekism Discord server. You'll find the link for that in the description. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.